this video is a quick mishmash of a couple smaller items that don't deserve their own full-blown video yet. The first one is an update to the iFi cards. I noticed this morning that my phone updated the iFi app and I was curious what those updates were and I went and took a look at the changelog. Really nice new feature and that is automatic geotagging if you turn it on of your photos. Now, you might be thinking, oh, I thought the iFi cards did geotagging already. They did in a really lame hotspot kind of way. If it knew where the hotspot was and you were connected to the Wi-Fi um, of that hotspot, it would roughly tag your pictures with a general location. That is what geotagging is. It is writing location data into your photo. Now, with this update, it is much smarter. It will use the phone's location, and there's an option in here to save battery life and have it update every so often or update more frequently. But basically, when you transfer a picture over, and it's expecting that you're transferring them over as you take them, it will look at where you are using the phone's GPS and write that information into the file. This is a nice little feature um, that they added and of course is free if you already have an iFi card. I really like these. I did the Wi-Fi dongle review um, a couple days ago for the Nikon D5200, D3200. I had several questions of, is there anything similar that Canon offers? The Canon 6D, which is their entry-level full-frame camera now, does have built-in Wi-Fi and GPS, and Canon produces an app, or Canon has an app, that allow you to access the pictures on there and pull them off, very similar to that dongle from Nikon. Um, but there is no add-ons for the you know, T4i and other entry-level Rebels, but the iFi card does get you close. It doesn't do the live view streaming, but it does do the GPS tagging, and it does, of course, send the pictures over in direct mode, and it works very nicely. So that's really nifty. It's built into the iFi app if you update it or get it if you haven't already had it. Second thing is, I don't know why it's taken me so long to get this, maybe because I, I personally don't have a big screen TV, but these cameras all do HDMI out. And for just a couple bucks, you can pick up these little mini HDMI to full HDMI adapter, and it slides into the side. Let me grab the T4i. And it just slides right into the HDMI output, and then you can slide in a regular HDMI cord into the side of the camera and uh, output to TVs uh, or any monitor that accepts HDMI, which is quite a lot. So, and it's just small enough. I would prefer carrying this around because it's very likely that there's already HDMI cables hooked up to the back of most people's TVs if you wanted to do a little slideshow, um, which I don't know if you know, but one of the things you can do straight out of the TV4i is a slideshow with music. If you put music on the SD card, it will pick it up off of there and use it for the slideshow. I've never used that, but it's a feature that you could do, um, that you could use. Next thing that I wanna talk about, uh, somebody asked me to review this a few days ago, actually, truthfully, about a week or two ago now. Uh, it is an app called DSLR Controller. The good news is it's really slick. The bad news is I haven't had great success working with the T4i. So if you have a T4i, the, I just haven't had great success. You may have better success. What it allows you to do is using a USB host cable, uh, connect your Android device to your camera and then see live view. So right now, this camera is filming me. It's running through a USB cable to a USB host cable. And all that is is on one side, it's that standard micro USB Android type connector. And on the other side, it's plugged for a full size USB. Um, there are different quality ones I hear. And if you are interested in getting this app, you should follow their directions and get the one they recommend. And they actually recommend different ones depending on your device. But then you have this full screen and everything is right here. It's all touch sensitive. It's pretty slick. While you're recording, you can make changes. So I can change the ISO. Let's just go down a little bit and you can see that instantly it changes the ISO right here on this touch screen and also in the big screen. Let's see, what were we at? Were we at 2500? Let's go back up to 2500. Let's say we wanna go a little brighter, 3200. And I can change the aperture. And here's my range for this lens. I can go to 28 and see that it gets a lot brighter. So there's a couple nice things about this. One, the ability to start and stop the recording by pressing the big red button. Another is the ability to see yourself 
and to check focus. I could ask it to refocus right now, right over here. Um, I just touched there, and now I'm going to touch, and you can see that it refocused. Let me bring it back over to me and refocus. So that's really slick. This app is a little expensive as apps go. I think it is $7.99, um, but honestly, when you talk about the, the ability that this app gives you, $8, that's really not a lot of money. You do need the little USB host cable. Those range from $2 to $5, so we're not talking about a lot of money. And if you need to set this up often and you don't have somebody to focus for you, this is a really nice way to um, kind of check your exposure and your levels right there without um, having to look at the back of the camera, plus all of the other controls it gives you. One thing that I can't seem to figure out is how to get it actually to download the photos. It will show me the photos on the back of the camera, and that's quite handy, but um, I'm sorry, it will show me the photos in the camera on the tablet, but I can't actually get them to download. And uh, if anybody knows how to do that, let me know. Um, they're, they display, they're there, but then I don't have any options to save and they don't seem to be appearing in the gallery. But this is really neat, way more full featured uh, and controls than I thought. All of the settings you can change right here and of course even the focus, so that's really nifty. So that was a lot of things real quick. That was the iFi car with GPS now, uh, real GPS tagged with your application. Little mini HDMI cable, everybody needs one of these, really easy to display out from your camera and then DSLR controller app. I'm gonna be doing a more full featured review of how the GPS works in the iFi card soon. I will be talking about the DSLR controller more soon, but for now, that's all I wanna say about those things. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you.